Hello and hi everyone, you guys eat sushi? Did you know about their process or life cycle of the sushi? Let me show you about the life cycle assessment, LCA, of sushi. Come on, let's go. Here are the contents about sushi. First, fun facts about sushi. Second, percentage of seafood used for sushi around the world. Third, life cycle of sushi. Fourth, impact to environment. Fifth, mitigation. And lastly, references. Japanese preferred to eat with rice where during 1300s called namanare was the most popular type of sushi. Namanare was partly raw fish wrapped in rice and consumed it freshly. Rice now mixed with vinegar and sugar with some fish, vegetables and dried foodstuff. This type of sushi is still very popular till nowadays. During 1600s, third type of sushi was developed called Hayazushi where it was assembled making rice and fish could be consumed together. The dish became unique. It was the first time that rice was not being used for fermentation. Now, we move to the percentage of seafood used for sushi around the world. Starting with the highest which is tuna with 75% followed by salmon with 57% flatfish with 32% crab with 22% shrimp with 59% and lastly octopus with 49%. Now, let's start our main topic which is life cycle of sushi. Let's go! First cycle is manufacturing. In the manufacturing, seafood will arrive to the chef. All the ingredients will be mix up if needed such as rice, seaweed and vegetables. And dip sauce and side dish will serve as well such as wasabi. Second cycle is raw material extraction. In this cycle, best seafood is chosen. Mostly farmed fish from Japan, US, Norway, Britain, New Zealand and Canada among the best. These countries have strict standards on cleanliness and will not find parasites in their farmed fish. Next cycle is distribution and transportation. During this cycle, sushi typically served with soy sauce, wasabi and gari. Sushi normally served at room temperature as cooling the rice destroys the proper texture and flavor. The fish on top of sushi typically raw fish are cold while some are heated such as salmon. Then cycle of consume, packaging. During this cycle, sushi will be served fresh on conveyor belt in every sushi restaurants. But it can still be packed in plastic container as to protect the freshness of the sushi. It is recommended to eat sushi in packaging as soon as bought it. For the last cycle is eat and composting at the end. First, receive the plate of sushi and put some of the soy sauce. Dip the sushi into the soy sauce, put little wasabi if you need extra spicy. After that you can eat. Eat a piece of pickled ginger in between each roll or bite to remove the lingering flavor rinse and repeat until you're finished. And the end, leftovers will be compost since food waste is the best natural fertilizer. Let's move on to the impact of the life cycle of sushi to our environment. First, about the overfishing. Overfishing and high demand have pushed favorable fish to the brink. Estimation current population of the fish is just 2.6% of it is historic size. Around 90% of salmon produced by sustainable Alaska fisheries. However, wild Pacific salmon face increasing threats from habitat destruction and overharvesting. Seaweed rich in antioxidants and vitamins. But nowadays, warming ocean due to overharvesting causes the waters threatening seaweed farmers' livelihoods. Next, about the soy bean and patty. About 75% of soy is used for farmed fish. Due to growing demand, soy production has become the second largest agricultural driver of deforestation. Rice production requires large flooded areas as to cover the high demand and responsible by the greenhouse gas that generated such as carbon dioxide, methane and nitric oxide. Thus, contributes to global warming. Then, about the excessive calories. Too many calories. Be careful with portion size, since sushi rolls can quickly add up. One roll can contain more than 500 calories. 
therefore can add padding to waistline. About the sticky rice. It's made with vinegar and added sugar to make the rice sticky and adhesive. The added sugar spikes insulin levels to regulate blood sugar levels that cause groggy, cranky and serious cravings. For the last part is mitigation. First, an initiative of WWF is supporting exciting innovations for sustainable seaweed farming including pumps that push cool and nutrient-rich water toward the sea surface to promote seaweed growth. Second, WWF with Salmon Farms to help achieve Aquaculture Stewardship Council certification is to encourage sustainable practices and reducing the environmental impacts of open pen salmon farming. Next, WWF supports an eco-friendly rice farming technique called the System of Rice Intensification that reduces water use about 30% while increasing crop yields and farm incomes. Then, WWF is working with the soy industry to adopt more sustainable practices. Lastly, WWF is working with local communities to prevent the construction of pebble mine which could have divesting commercial and environmental impacts of tuna. That's all from me about the life cycle assessment of sushi. Thank you for listening. I hope this video was able to help you get to know the life cycle of sushi better after this. Bye. See you again.